All right, man, peace. So after a lot of ups and downs, insults exchanged, failed drug tests, circuitous negotiations, etc., finally the Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Triple G Golovkin rematch has been cemented for this September Mexican Independence Day to make it a one-year anniversary from their original match fought in September of 2017, which was a much ballyhooed fight with a very controversial conclusion which to me was premeditated to set up this mega rematch. There's a little doubt in my mind about that because although I thought that Canelo Alvarez showed supreme boxing skills over Gennady Triple G Golovkin, I didn't think that he did enough in that fight to get a draw, at least not against a vaunted champion like Triple G. And the more that I analyze these two, they come off to me like a very bad, overly long married couple who spends more time trying to prove that they're worth more in the relationship than the other person is when in fact they have to come together and understand that they need one another and it's very obvious to me that Canelo and Oscar De La Hoya finally came to the understanding that they had to stop bullshitting because either they were going to fight Gennady Triple G Golovkin in this rematch and make as much money as they could off of this fight while Golovkin was still relatively young enough to be a bankable star and make for a mega fight or they were going to have to try to leave Golovkin behind and fight an even more dangerous match against a Jamal Charlo or Danny Jacobs. So they made the right business decision. They swallowed their pride. And of course, this is going to set up a very cantankerous press tour with Triple G already alleging that the reason why Canelo is not showing up for the press tour is because he's too scared and he feels too shamed to look him in the eye for getting caught testing positive for clenbuterol, which is a banned performance enhancing drug. Well, anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Shots and boxing. Golden Boy Productions has set a deadline of 12 p.m. Pacific today for the Triple G to accept the final offer to fight Canelo this fall. The split now is 57.5, 42.5% in favor of Alvarez. Canelo's failed drug test led to the cancellation of the May 5th rematch. Max Kellerman, yep. did Triple G accept this latest offer? Yes. As you guys can see, this segment was filmed before the fight deal was cemented. The reason why I'm including it is because they touched on a lot of various points that are certainly necessary to put this fight in proper context. Yes, he should. And by the way, I know people negotiate their own deals and whatever in time will tell. I'm talking about the way I feel. Should he, yes or no? Yes, Triple G should take the offer. Of course you're going to say yes. You work for HBO. The fight's going to be broadcast on HBO. Look. He, I thought, won the first fight. Most people did. I thought the scores could have been anywhere from 8-4 to Triple G to 6-6 six, six a draw. It well, look, we know that Oscar De La Hoya is not scared to grease the palms of certain judges. Please see the Canelo Alvarez versus Floyd Mayweather fight. But it turned out the draws had it, right? So Canelo Alvarez got the draw. It was possible, but, but I, I thought that was a little generous to, to Canelo. Triple G is also not the one who failed the drug test. I understand why he thinks he should get 50-50. Before you go on, let me yes. ask a quick question because you would know the answer to this question. Before the first rematch, the rematch got halted, yes. suspended because of the failed drug test. What was the percentage that was agreed upon for that fight? It wasn't 50-50. Yeah, I'm sure that it wasn't 50-50. But Triple G was able to divest the majority of the purse to Canelo because he understood that Canelo was the bigger star and it was probably going to be the most money that he ever had a chance to make, especially at that stage of his career. Do I agree with Triple G that he deserves 50-50 for this fight in light of the fact that once again he is the champion and also Canelo has failed those drug tests? Yes, I do. But I also believe that sometimes you have to swallow your pride and you have to see the big picture. Triple G is, what, 36, 37 years old? There are not many mega fights that he has left on the horizon unless he wants to go fight Jamal Charlo. Jamal Charlo is waiting for these guys. He's like Mr. T in Rocky Three. He's the guy out there that both of those fighters know can beat them. And they won't be able to generate even a fraction of the revenue as they would in fighting one another. So they might as well get each other's rematch out the way before they go off to see if they can defeat Daniel Jacobs or Jamal Charlo or any of these other skilled fighters who have an even greater chance of beating them than they have of beating one another. And they won't have a chance of making even a modicum of the revenue fighting either one of those guys. Yeah, I don't remember. I, I, know, I know that, but wasn't this is there what, an agreed this percentage? Was, there was a 65-35 assumption by the Canelo camp. There was a 50-50 request by Triple G. This number that they now come to, 57 and a half, 42 and a half. What, what Golden Boy is saying is, look, 
Canelo is the bigger draw. We can make more money than you can if we don't fight each other. We can make the most money fighting each other, so we'd also like to fight you. But we can make more money than you can if we don't fight each other. Okay. So obviously, Triple G is not bringing fully 50% of the... But I think this is also recognition... Right, but then what does that say about HBO and how they built up Triple G? You guys have spent the last five years talking about him like he's the Terminator. And you mean to tell me that you couldn't get involved in the negotiations to assist Gennady Golovkin in possibly getting 50%? Ignition on the part of Golden Boy that, yep, our guy's the one who failed the drug test. Yep, more people thought you guys won than they thought our guy won. So we're, let's be reasonable. Okay. We will meet you halfway at this point. Well, no, sir. Actually, reasonable would be 50-50. Point. Triple G is going to do what he can do. I like Triple G a lot. He's got to conduct his own business. Mm -hmm. I'm a boxing fan, Stephen A. Mm -hmm. I would like to see this rematch. It seems to me that when one side tells the other, we'll meet you in the middle, <laughs> shake on it. Let's do it. Well, that's a bit of a straw man to say that one side said we're going to meet you in the middle. The quote-unquote middle is based on an initial offer that was created by the De La Hoya slash Alvarez side. So what middle are we really talking about? There's only one middle and that's 50-50. I slightly disagree with you. And here's, and here's what I'm saying. I do understand the 65-35 split that you come up halfway from there. Because they were at 50-50, you were at 65-35, so you come up seven and a half to, you know, split it in half to 15% gap into what you think you deserve. I understand that. Here's where I would say to Oscar De La Hoya and his camp, come up to 45% of Triple G. In other words, a 50... I agree with you, sir. I understand the De La Hoya slash Canelo side saying, look, we're not going to give you 50-50. We know that you're a vaunted middleweight champion. We know that we probably got a gift draw in the last fight, but still, we're the bigger draw, so we're not going to get you 50-50. But as Stephen A. Smith stated, at least get a man 55-45, 53-47. It's not like Canelo was Floyd Mayweather or something, that he can basically write his own checks. 55-45 split call of the day. First of all, 42.5%. What we're talking about here, 2.5%, that's number one. Number two... Well, remember, Stephen A. Smith, it's easy for you to say 2.5%, but when you're dealing in business, 2.5% could be $25 million. I mean, who does that? Listen, listen, I understand that, but who does that, Max? What I'm trying to say to you, in all your years, because obviously, like I, like I tell you, you need to do with basketball. I always do what you were boxing. I'm going to defer. I'm going to defer to you on basketball. We don't have a show. Whatever, you, whatever, you, you know what? Excuse me? That's a different subject for another day. Here's a deal. Oh, God. It's a different subject for another day. Here's a deal. Have you heard of that? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm asking you an honest question. I haven't heard of somebody get 42 and a half percent. I've heard of 40. I've heard of 30, 25. I've heard of 45. I've heard of hard numbers. 42 and a half. Well, Stephen A. Smith, what that should tell you is that Golden Boy is on his last legs. When they start quibbling about half percentages like that, that's their way of telling you that we need Canelo to win this fight. And we need as many psychological advantages as we can muster. We have to make him feel like He's the favorite coming into this bout. Hopefully, we can pay off a couple of more judges, the referee, the broadcasters, make everybody think that Canelo's going to win this rematch. We need him to win this rematch because we're golden boy and we're on our last legs. That's what that should tell you. Isn't there, some, isn't there something a little bit specific in that, like sort of rubbing your nose in it? Look, you're not the guy. Be happy with what you got. First of all, let's be clear. We all thought Canelo lost that fight. Narrowly, very, very great fight, excellent fight. None of us were. The only thing we should have been disappointed with is the one judge's scorecard. That's it. Outside of that, there was nothing promotionally. There was nothing excellent fight night. Fight, yeah. Excellent, all of it. And that's true. Please, you ain't got to pay us to promote it. We'll gladly do it on our own. I'll do it forever for Oscar. Del well, you will do it on your own, Stephen A. Smith. Max Kellerman thinking in his mind. Schwarzer, speak for yourself. I'm getting paid to talk up this fight because I'm going to be broadcasting it. Speak for your damn self, Goyim. <laughs> I love that man. Listen, about and it, it's a fight too. But like you have to call that. But fight. here's the point. That's <laughs> right. You <laughs> caught ding. You caught the fight want, and did a great job. Of it. And you did a great job. You and of course the great Jim Lampley, the voice of boxing, as far as I'm concerned. But here's the deal. Forty-two and a half percent. Really? You, your guy did fail the test. Yep. We were looking forward to this fight happening. It was supposed to happen already. We were supposed to leave the playoffs and go there for the fight, okay? It 
To be quite frank with you, I hope that Gennady Triple G Golovkin knocks his ass out. Did it happen? That wasn't Triple G's. And I actually like Canelo. But all this bullshit that he's putting Triple G through when he's the one who failed the drug test, like, give me a break. No honor. Triple G's fault. Triple G showed up and, 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 and fought valiantly in the first fight. The rematch was supposed to happen. He was ready. Your guy wasn't because of bad meat in Mexico, if that's what we want to legitimately contribute it to. So be it. The fight gets stalled because of that. And you're going to sit up there and, and, and waggle over two and a half percent when it's a 55 to 45. Now, I'll agree. Triple G is not the draw that Canelo is. That's fair. And it should not be a 50-50 split. Triple G in his camp, I know you're watching. I know you're listening because you text me all the time. Damn it, you don't deserve a 50-50 split. But, I agree. But 55-45 is right. fair. I agree with you, Stephen A. Smith. I think that 55-45 would have been fair. 50-50 would have been on good faith and it would have been an act of honor on the part of Canelo and Oscar De La Hoya. But as I've already stated, Golden Boy is on their last legs. But really, as an act of faith, they should have said, you know what, Triple G, we're going to give you 50-50 after he pressed so hard for it. But 55-45 to me is something that is more than fair. I'm not quite sure what they settled on at the end, but I hope that Triple G knocks his ass out. I really do. Because for you to fill that drug test like that, and then to be haggling over half percentages. All that tells me is that, once again, Golden Boy is extremely desperate. And they don't know what they're going to do if Canelo does not win this bout. You're getting hung up on the round number of it all. I think what Golden Boy simply did was say, they're there, we're here, and split let's the split middle. the difference and, and call and, it a day. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with you if it's just about the leverage. But it's not just about the leverage. Your guy messed up. Well, if it's just about the leverage. Absolutely. Then that's the thing. But you know what? What they're really saying is that, Triple G, we know something that you know. And that is that you might have three fights left in your career, tops. And if you want to make the most money that you can make, you're going to agree to what we offer you. Now, at the same time, we need you. Even though I'm sure that Golden Boy did not want to admit that to Triple G's team directly. We need you because if we don't fight you... We're going to have to fight Charlo or Danny Jacobs. And that's a fight that we could lose just as much as we could lose this fight. And we won't be able to make as much money with them as we will with you. So let's make this happen. But to be quite frank with you, I agree with Stephen A. 55-45 would have been fair. Really, Triple G deserved 50-50 for all that fuckery from Canelo and the, and the Golden Boy camp. No, 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 what I'm saying is your guy messed up. And if your guy messed up... You can do a 55 45 split. We're back on the air talking about they got a deal done. That's right. But anyway, that's it on the Gennady Triple G Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez rematch. We'll see what happens this September once again. I hope that Triple G can stop him. I doubt that he'll be able to. I think that Canelo will be utilizing too much upper body movement, head movement, and he'll try to use footwork even though he gasses out when he moves his feet too much. We'll see what happens. I thought that Gennady showed signs of slippage with his inability to cut off the ring against Canelo. And one would think that he would have been able to cut off the ring against Canelo because Canelo's feet are not quick. His feet are not fast at all. His footwork is at best average. So we'll see if there's any more slippage in this rematch. So peace.